Hello everyone, you are welcome to solve this nice exponential problem, which is 4 to the power of x plus 6 to the power of x. This is equal to 9 to the power of x. Now, what is the value of x given that x is not equal to 0? Now, let's prevent the solution from here. Now, <clears throat> we have 4 to the power of x plus 6 to the power of x. This is equal to 9 to the power of x. The first to do here, the first step is to divide both sides by 4 to the power of x. So that now, 4 to the power of x here simplifies so that we have 1 plus, we can express 6 here. This is the same thing as 3 times 2 raised to the power of x divided by 4. This can be expressed as 2 times 2 raised to the power of x. This is equal to, we can express 9. This is 3 times 3 raised to the power of x then divided by 4 which is 2 times 2 raised to the power of x. Now, this is actually in the form of a to the power of n divided by b to the power of n, and this can be expressed as a over b raised to the power of n. Applying this exponent property, then here we have 1 plus, now this is the same thing as 3 times 2 divided by 2 times 2 here raised to the power of x, this is equal to, now here we have 3 times 3 divided by 2 times 2 raised to the power of x here. And you find that here, 2 and 2 simplifies, so that we have 1 plus 3 over 2 raised to the power of x, this is equal to, now 3 times 3 here, this is 3 to the power of 2 divided by 2 to the power of 2 raised to the power of x. Applying this property here, then we can express this as 1 plus 3 over 2 raised to the power of x. This is equal to 3 over 2 raised to the power of 2, then raised to the power of x. Now, 3 over 2 raised to the power of 2 raised to the power of x. This is in the form of a to the power of n raised to the power m. And this can be expressed as a to the power of m raised to the power n. Applying this exponent property, then here we have 1 plus 3 over 2 raised to the power of x. This is equal to 3 over 2 raised to the power of x, then raised to the power of 2. So the next step from here, now we can let... 3 over 2 raised to the power of x, this be equal to u. So let's substitute u so that we have 1 plus u. This is equal to u to the power of 2. The next step is to take 1 plus u on the right hand side so that we have u squared minus u minus 1. This is equal to 0. Now, we form a quadratic equation here of the form au squared plus bu, then plus c, this is equal to 0. From this quadratic equation here, you find that a is equal to 1, b is equal to minus 1, and that c is also equal to minus 1. So we can solve for u1, comma u2, by applying the quadratic formula, that's minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, everything here, divided by 2 times a. So let's substitute the values of a, b, and c so that we have minus into the parentheses minus 1 plus or minus the square root of minus 1 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, then times c, which is minus 1 divided by 2 times a, which is 1. Now, here we have minus times minus 1, 
this is equal to 1, then plus or minus the square root of minus 1 squared, this is 1, then minus 4 times minus 1, this is plus 4, then everything here divided by 2. So here we have 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 4, this is the square root of 5, divided by 2. So this implies that we have two values of u. We have u1, this is equal to 1 plus square root of 5, divided by 2. And we have that u2, this is equal to 1 minus square root of 5, divided by 2. The next step from here, if you recall, we assume that let 3 over 2 raised to the power of x be equal to u. So we can substitute u, u1 and u2 here. Now substituting u with 3 over 2 raised to the power of x, this means we have 3 over 2 raised to the power of x. This is equal to 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 2. And on the second part here, we have 3 over 2 raised to the power of x. This is equal to 1 minus square root of 5 divided by 2. So this implies that 3 over 2 raised to the power of x, this will give us a positive value. And on the right hand side, we have a positive value. This implies that we can proceed to solve for the value of x in this part here. On the second part here, 3 over 2 raised to the power of x, this is positive. But now on the right hand side, 1 minus square root of 5, this is going to give us a negative value. And when we introduce logarithm here, that means that we cannot be able to solve for x, hence we'll have what we call undefined results. We'll have undefined result. So this part essentially is rejected. So this part is rejected. So let's proceed with 3 over 2 raised to the power of x. This is equal to 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 2. To solve for x here, we introduce logarithm on both sides so that we have from 3 over 2 raised to the power of x. This is equal to log 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 2. Now, you find that log 3 over 2 raised to the power of x, this is in the form of log a to the power of n, and this can essentially be expressed as n log a. Applying this power root property, then here we have x log 3 over 2. This is equal to log 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 2. The next step is that rog 3 over 2 and rog 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. This is in the form of rog a over b. And this can be expressed as rog a subtract rog b. Now, applying this logarithm property, then here we have x into the parentheses. We have rog 3 subtract rog 2. This is equal to rog 1 plus square root of 5, then subtract rog 2. So the next step from here is to divide both signs by rog 3, subtract rog 2. Also here we divide by rog 3, subtract rog 2. So the next step is to simplify here. So that now we have x is equal to rog 1 plus square root of 5 subtract rog 2 divided by rog 3 subtract rog 2. So this implies that x here is equal to now rog 1 plus square root of 5. This is the same thing as 0. 5100 subtract rog 2 here, which is actually 0 
zero one zero divided by log three, which is zero point four seven seven one subtract zero point three zero one zero. And this implies that x is equal to now the numerator part here. If we subtract here, we have zero point two zero nine divided by the numerator here, the denominator here. We have 0 0.4770 minus 0 0.3010, which is 0 0.1761. And this implies that x is equal to 1.1868. So this is the value of x. This is the value of x. The next step is to verify. So let's verify that this value of x satisfies the equation. Now, if you recall, we hand that 4 to the power of x, then plus 6 to the power of x. This should give us a value of 9 to the power of x. Let's substitute x so that we have 4 to the power of 1.1868, 1 then plus 6 to the power of 1.1868. 1 this is supposed to give us a value of 9. To the power of 1.1868. Now, 4 to the power of 1.1868, this is the same thing as 5.1823, then plus 6 to the power of 1.1868, this is the same thing as 8.3851, this is equal is supposed to give us a value of 9 to the power of 1.1868, which is actually equal to 13.5674. Now, if you have 5.1823 5 plus 8.3851, 5 this will give us a value of 13.5674. Seven four, which is equal to thirteen point five six seven four, and this implies that the left add side is equal to the right add side, and this implies that the value of x here, which is one point one eight six eight, satisfies the equation. So, kind of forward steps like this video. Like this video and subscribe. Country, like this video and subscribe. Now, see you in the next video. Bye bye for now.